Yeah. How y'all feeling today, ladies and gentlemen? It's Ob Wit Wit TV TMQ. Catch me on Xbox One. Ob Wit eighty nine mixer. Ob Wit eighty nine YouTube is Wit TV. Uh, make sure you follow Wit TV on Instagram. That's Wit TV eighty nine, and also the same name as is on Twitter. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to talk a little bit about the Washington game. Went to the game. was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Sorry about that. Even though it rained, and nothing but a mud bowl. And we got that mud bowl, and we won it 9-0. Missed two field goals. It is what it is. Been 13-3. They would have made theirs. Um, Adrian Peterson fumbled. Called some the game. I ain't going to blame it all on them. But he did what he had to do. He ran hard at the beginning of the game. It was kind of scary. It is what it is. It's raining. What you want us to do? All we can do is run the ball. Run, 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 run. Now, as that's out the way, <sighs> it's a good time to be a Niner, isn't it? Still 6 0, still undefeated. Also picking up Broncos wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders for the third and fourth round pick. How do you guys like that move right there? I mean, me personally, I love it. Because I'm looking at it this way. We got Wes Barker at uh, receiver coach. And I feel Emmanuel saying, and I hate you. They're not the same person, but, you know, the slot receiver position. He can show him, hey, this is how I did it. This is what I did. He was successful. But now we got a faster Wes Barker and also can go deep with him and Debo, uh, Pettis, Goodwin, even Hurd. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, we're stacked, but it's like, what are we going to do with everybody? You know, we can't play everybody. We got to get rid of some people. We have to get rid of some people. I hope that they pick the right person to get rid of. So, me personally, great move. Emmanuel Sanders, looking forward to coming to play for 49ers. Hey, he want to showcase his talent. So now we can put him at slot outside, put Debo here, put... Good one there. So many, so many options, and it's opening up the pass for um, Kittle. He's a, I know he's a tight end, but he's our number one receiver in my eyes. Me personally, he did what he got to do. Not having a main standards opens up so much more. So I'm gonna get here, get straight to the point. Uh, we're here for the prediction. We got Carolina this Sunday. Um. Kyle Allen, their, their rookie quarterback, their rookie sensation, um, played the last game against Tampa Bay. Final score of 37-26 was pushed them to 4-2. Uh, they, a lot of people say it's a good competition. A lot of people going to say this. A lot of people going to say that. Of course, they're not going to give us credit when credit is due. Like I said, Kyle Allen in that Tampa Bay game was 20-32, 227 yards, and two touchdowns. But this is the biggest thing right here, Christian McCaffrey. I'm a big fan of him. I'm a huge fan of him. Not to say that we're going to be scared of him, but I'm a huge fan of him. He's very shifty, very elusive. I'm not going to say he's Barry Sanders, but, hey, that's the best thing we can get to Barry Sanders right now. He only had 22 carries, 31 yards, and one touchdown. But it's the biggest thing, too. He's also good at receiving. Four catches, 26 yards, one touchdown. To me personally, Christian McCaffrey is the biggest threat they got on offense. No disrespect to Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, uh, or even Greg Olson. But who's really looking for <laughs> I want to say it that way. Who's looking for Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore? I mean, DJ Moore has seven catches, 73 yards, no touchdowns. Curtis Samuel, four, four catches, 70 yards, one touchdown. Greg Olson, four, four catches, 52 yards. Now, no disrespect to none of them. I, I just feel like their biggest asset is Christian McCaffrey. It's the only person I can see really doing as much damage to the defense. Uh, you know, Eric Reed, a 49er, it is what it is. I wish we still had you, but now, you know, <laughs> you're the enemy now. So uh, the defense stack with James uh, Badbury, Eric Reed, Elliott, Luke Kinkley, Shaq Thomas, Don Terry Poe. I mean, they Bruce Irvin. I mean, they got a stacked team. You know, I can honestly say that it is a bigger competition. But you look at the look at the Browns. They look good on paper. I mean, granted, you know, they didn't have that whole team for you know for a while, but they still young. This team we face it now is a bigger competition. But at the same time, we say got past the Rams too. They had an awesome defense. 
quote unquote, a lot of people say. Um, but I don't really see Kyle Morey. Oh, I call him Kyle Morey. <laughs> I'm ready for the Cardinals game already. Kyle Allen, he didn't really have no pass rush team yet. You know, he really didn't. And I'm looking at it like he really didn't. I mean, Tampa Bay's <laughs> Tampa Bay going to be Tampa Bay. You never know what you're going to get with him. James Winston that quarter. We never know what we're going to get him. They put up 50 on the Rams, but only put up 26 on the Panthers. So, like I said, it's hard to determine who that team is. They don't even identify themselves yet. But having them against the Carolina Panthers, like I said, you never know what you're going to get. But I know the biggest threat we have is Christian McCaffrey. That person right there, we can contain him as well as we did um, Nick Chubb. We have nothing to worry about. We have nothing to worry about. I want I want Kyle Allen to throw the ball. I want him to throw the ball. He's a rookie. And we hit him in the mouth early and let him taste what it feels like to be in the NFL. Good two couple good hits gonna rattle his cage. I can honestly feel it. And if they decide to put Cam Newton in, you already know what he's gonna try to do. <laughs> the game is ours. If we can come in there and do what we got to do as far as defense, I, I'm really excited to see that. Like I said, from the Washington game, really couldn't put an offensive drive together in that rain. Was, like I said, with the mud bowl, quote unquote, coming from Richard Sherman, uh, 9 0. I mean, we couldn't run, couldn't throw. It was just a terrible game. But, you know, if we still came out a win, it's always bad for an ugly win and an ugly loss. Still 6 0. We still uh, on heading in the NFC. And we're here to stay. Now, with the Panthers, like I said, man, I don't I don't see them beating us. You know, like I said, my prediction, honestly, I'm going to have to say 27-17. The only reason I'm giving them 17 points is for the simple fact of Christian McCaffrey. He, Like I said, he, he's slick. He's slippery. He could get away. He could do certain things that a lot of teams are not capable of doing with their backs. You know, it's on, but it's only one player. There's only one player. Like I said, no disrespect to uh, DJ Moore, Chris, uh, Samuel, Curtis Samuel, uh, Greg, Al- Greg Olson. So I'm, I don't know where I'm going with these names. But we also have players coming back. I think Witherspoon coming back. Uh, Staley was out there uh, doing warm-ups. Um, like I said, we're getting Emmanuel Sanders. Hopefully he'll be uh, – Equip with everything he needs to know as far as the offensive plays go. Because, like, having him out there going to change the whole dynamic of the game. I mean, I'm just excited to see him come in to the 49ers. I know we we had A.J. Green, Keenan Allen, Sanu went to the Patriots, but I think he was up there. And Gabriel was also up there as team players we were looking for. I would love to have uh, Allen. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to have Keenan Allen? I would love to have Keenan Allen, but we got Samuel. I think that him being so, you know, me personally, I think he'd be more like the the Richard Sherman of the offense. You know, get that young core together, get him, get him rocking and rolling because we got a young team. You know, young corners, young D line. What's forward is that Richard Sherman. Then we got Richard Sherman for the DBs, and then we got um, Alexander for the linebackers. But now we got Samuel to so just to show them. A veteran way of getting open, a veteran way of sitting in the uh, zone. Just a veteran way to just stay focused and get this up prep for the game. Like I said, young core. We're a young core as far as receiver. We got Debo, rookie, Pettis for the second year, uh, Bourne, Goodwin. Like I said, he, he's up there, but it's like, you know, he's not that, that the household name. You know what I'm saying? He's fast. He's explosive yes he is he is I'm not taking that from him I love him but he's not consistent and consistency is what I want to see and I think that having uh Sanders will boost that I really like to see that I really like to see I, I, I'm, I'm just so excited to see uh Samuels I am so excited to see him man I am so excited to see him the craziest thing well then we're gonna get the crazy thing I was talking, Sue, Sanu 12, Tom Brady 12, Samuel 10, Garoppolo 10. What's that telling y'all? <laughs> What's that telling y'all? <laughs> okay, I'm going to read some off of uh, www.sacbee.com. 
uh, say Santa Clara. The San Francisco 49ers made a significant move to uh, blow to their receiving corps Tuesday. The team traded for the Broncos wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders, as first reported by Nine News in Denver. The 49ers are sending 2020 to, uh, draft picks, 2020's draft pick, third and fourth round pick to the Broncos, who are sending a 2020 fifth round selection with Sanders to the San Francisco as the team announced. Emmanuel Sanders' passion about football, a player whose toughness and competitive nature have helped him become a dynamic playmaker in this league. 49 general manager John Lynch wrote in a statement, he possesses a number of qualities. I agree with that. On the, on the field and off the field, that we value in our players. His familiarities in a similar offense system will allow for a quick transition. We are excited to add Emmanuel to our roster and look forward to seeing him positively impact our team. Sanders was 32, had three straight 1,000-yard seasons with the Broncos from 2014 to 2016, and is a two-time Pro Bowl, a 10-year veteran. That's what I'm talking about, 10-year vet. As a final season of his three-year, $33 million contract, his cap number for 2019 is just under $13 million, according to OverTheCap.com. Sanders this year has 30 catches for 367 yards and two touchdowns, which is more than any 49 receiver to this date. You see what I'm saying? That right there just allows <laughs> our offense to open up. Tight end George Kittle, San Francisco leading pass catcher with 34 receptions, 376. And that's a tight end. I just want to put that out there. That's a tight end. We didn't have a number one receiver. This is what we were looking for. We are looking for a person that can impact the game quick. It's a hard, it's hard. Anytime you break up or leave a place, it's tough. Sanders told reporters in Denver as he left the Broncos facility Thursday. Thursday, I mean Tuesday, I apologize. We definitely had a great run in our, out here in Denver. A lot of great time. Obviously, all the great comes to the end. I mean, great things do come to the end. Looking forward to getting out to the San Fran and showcasing my talent, meeting the guys, and hopefully adding my explosiveness and my capabilities for their system and try to win. Sanders won the Super Bowl, and that's another key thing. He'd been there before. He'd been in that atmosphere. He understands how everything worked as far as getting to that next level. So, was, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo been there too, but, you know, as a backup. So he's seen it. He got the feel for it. So we have teams, we have players that have been there, and Richard Sherman too also. We got players that have been there. Sanders won the Super Bowl, but then following the 2015 season play at Levi Stadium, Lynch, of course, has a very close relationship with the Broncos executive John Elway. Fortnite's had an up close view of Sanders during joint training camp practice in August. <sighs> I know I'm reading a lot, but I just want y'all to know the background of Emmanuel Sanders. Sanders suffered a torn ACL December uh, 2018, but has rebounded to appear in all seven of Denver's games. He caught 30 of 44 targets and hasn't dropped a pass. 17 of his receptions have gone for first downs. Sanders is on pace for 839 yards this season while averaging over 52 yards per game. 49 coach Kyle Shanahan made his feelings clear about Sanders during the conference all Conference call with Broncos reporters before a game against the Denver Broncos. Emmanuel Sanders, to me, has been one of the most underrated receivers in the league his entire career. I think he's been a number one receiver since he's been in Denver. Emmanuel Sanders is the man. He's always been the man. He is extremely quick. He knows how to separate. He can beat man coverage. He also is fearless. He's aggressive with the ball. He doesn't mind going through, going there to block. He doesn't mind going over the middle, and he and he's one of the tougher challenges challenges in the league. That right there, just you know, showcases his talent and lets y'all know where he at so far in his tenth year in the NFL. Rookie Debo Sam and Dante Pettis, who were both recent second round pick draft draft picks, haven't been productive. Ah. Uh, Pettis has just nine catches for 83 yards in six games. Samuel missed Sunday's victory in Washington with a ground injury, but was the team's most effective wide out with 15 catches, 168 yards. I mean, that goes that can boil it down to who <laughs> who's standing, who's going. 
like I said, man, we got to have uh, effective receivers. You know, I mean, we got a great run game, but we don't got nobody to throw it to. Once we run the game, run the ball, the whole game, we don't got nobody to throw it to. We got nobody to catch it. You know, they're going to fill the box up. That's when you go over their head. Then you got to turn that to a balanced offense. The trade is clearly a win now. Hmm. Duh. Move for the 49ers. The 49ers are the only undefeated team in the NFC. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Six and no since 1990. First time. And have a realistic chance at a deep playoff run. Receivers was arguably one of the best rosters. Arguably the best rosters. Receivers roster. Sorry. Weakest position. Trent Taylor foot and rookie Jalen Hurd back on injury reserve. I love to see Jalen Hurd. I can't wait to see him come back. I, I really want to see what he could do because you could put him anywhere. Full back, half back, tight end. He's a big guy. You know, he did a lot over there in Baylor. So I love, really love to see what he got playing for us. I really, I really love to see that. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I know I'm sounding crazy, but I love my 49ers. 49ers have the NFL's 25th ranking pass offense averaging. 215 yards per game while the rushing attack, that's what I'm talking about, rushing attack has been at the front forefront opposite uh, team's elite defense. Shanahan has dialed up runs at the highest rate in the league, 57%, which is a production of San Francisco jumping out to big leagues and combinations with the inexperienced and banged up receiving core. Like I said, having Emmanuel Sanders just opened up so much for us. It opened up. It, it's opened up so much. Uh, it's gonna send defensive coordinators into nightmares. I really feel because you got so much speed at the receiver and it's so much speed at the backfield. And having George Kittle just—it's like it's like a big pot of gumbo. You're just putting everything you like in there. Everything. Then you got George. Kittle in there, throw Emmanuel Sanders in there, throw Coleman in there. Just, then you got Jimmy Garoppolo stirring it all up. Then you got Kyle Shanahan throwing his, his season in there to turn to be one of the great dinners you ever had. But do they respect it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do they respect it? So I'm going to talk about these draft picks. Sending third and fourth round picks to Denver while getting their fifth back. It's a steep price. It means the 49ers won't have a picks in the rounds two through four. <sighs> ah. Like a team, we got a young team already. And, you know, just having Emmanuel Sanders, it's going to boost that. I mean, me personally, I I mean, ah, I don't even know he's 32. I mean, I, hey. We're going to win either win now. This is a great opportunity. We can't wait till next year. We need to go ahead and jump on it now. So uh, it, it is what it is. Sending their second-round choice to Kansas City for D4. That was a, a brilliant move. The Patriots early Tuesday morning acquired Mohamed Sanu, another realistic trade target for the San Francisco. I mean, I love to have him too because he's more of a big-body receiver. Great guy. I, I, I would have took him also. But, hey, they did. <laughs> hey, hey, it, it's it's it, – Get the players while you can, you know, for a second-round pick. Sunu is also 30. It's a younger than Santa, two years, what they do. It's signed through 2020 with a reasonable 7.9 mil cap hit next season. So, with all that, you know, we're going to miss some draft picks. It is what it is. Like I said, it's a season where we are, where we need to be. 6-0, and oh, we need to keep pushing that, keep throwing that coal in that steam. Let's keep throwing it. That train got to keep moving. The train got to keep moving. So picking all these players up while we can, we're losing draft pick, but we got players that's ready now. So, like me personally, I'm still not I'm not going to screen Super Bowl. I love my nine. I'm still not going to screen Super Bowl. We got to take one game at a time. We focus on the Panthers now. Like I said, that, that game's going to be 27-17. That's my prediction, 27-17. I guarantee you one of them touchdowns will be going to Emmanuel Sanders. I guarantee you. And watch how um, that rookie gets back up. Once we start hitting him in the mouth early, they're going to start rethinking who this guy really is. I mean, me personally, they ain't, they ain't really p face a pass rush like this. I mean, you got D4 and Bosa coming off the edge. Like, what can you do? Then you got Bosa and Armstead in the middle. What can you do? 
Then you got Alexander in the middle also with Warner. What can you do with Sherm out there? <laughs> Mosley out there, Ward out there, Williams out there. Like, what can you do? Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm very very hyped to see this. But you know, like I said, all with all these players coming in, you know, we we loaded on offense. But like, who can go? I mean, me personally, had a conversation with my cousin. He was telling me he think Dante Pettis got to go. Me personally, I would rather let go Kendrick Bourne. I mean, like I say, he's a great kid. You know what I'm, saying? I'm never going to take nothing from him. But me personally, just having a team of speed, he he slows on the team right now as far as receivers. Debo making an impact. You don't really hear too much of Kendrick Bourne. I mean, he, he's here and there as far as catches. I'm not going to take that from him. But Dante Pettis shown potential, I can, I can honestly say. Debo, first year, he really trying to get his feet up under him. Um... And Marquis Goodwin, I really want to see more from him. Uh, he ain't really, he really not really showing me too much. I really want to see more from him. I really do. I really do. And another positive note, uh, we got our lone snapper back from after having a ten game suspension, so that's a big plus. Hopefully, them field goals start going in. Like I said, we was was really struggling. You know, like that Washington game. But a lot of people saying it's come, it's, it's through the lone snapper. But hey, once that long, once that ball get in the hands of that holder, it needs to go in. So I really can't really say too much. I uh, did long slapping a little bit in high school, well, in college. So it's a difficult position. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on you. Marie, one little more note. There, uh, there didn't appear to be many glaring, glaring holes on San Francisco Rossons off season. The 49ers seem set at all levels of defense, and we here to stay. Um, couldn't say too much. You see the game ending right here. So uh, I got to end my segment. So please subscribe, like, comment, anything. Thanks for watching. Um, and let's go 49ers, man. Quest for six. We're going to get it brick by brick. We're going to get it done. Like I said, 27-17. Make sure y'all remember that score. TMQ. OB with 89, Xbox OB with 89, everything. With TV, 